What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and today's video is a first impressions review of Paths and Danger. This was released on April 15th by Golden God Games, and it is a roguelite strategy game, and we're gonna talk about what I think in this video. Currently the game is on Steam and it's available for the major operating systems like Windows, Mac, and Linux. But what I think is interesting is that this game has plans to go to iOS and Android as well. We'll talk about that more later because I think it's actually a pretty important point. If you've ever played Darkest Dungeon or Battle Brothers or both, then this game will feel kind of familiar because of how both of those play. It's kind of the team, or not team, but like the town building aspect and roster building that you have in Darkest Dungeon and then also moving through hallways, you know, paths and danger. So you walk down hallways or roads and fight enemies or have events. But then the combat plays closer to Battle Brothers where you have a hex-based system and your rank in terms of like front to back of your team isn't as important as the actual spacing of them. So it's a pretty good blend of the two games. As of the recording of this video, I played it for about nine hours now and I did enjoy it, but there are some things that are good and some things that are bad that we need to talk about. For the good stuff, there are a lot of classes in the game. I've seen at least, I think, five or six, and they all play pretty differently and have some pretty cool archetypes and abilities. So this means that you can make really interesting teams or mix and match to try and do different play styles. And there's always something new to try and test. Another really cool part about it is the game is animated. So if you're familiar with Darkest Dungeon and Battle Brothers, the animation in those games isn't really there. You know, the pieces that you see do move around and stuff like that, but especially like with Darkest Dungeon, that game's actually not really that animated, especially like when you attack, it's just two different frames and they do really good camera work to make it look more intense than what they're actually doing. But this game is actually animated. You see the units swing and they're voiced, which is cool. You just hear, you know, grunts and stuff when they hit each other. So it is a bit more immersive in that way. The characters have long-term progression where you can buy gear and skill upgrades with various components like weapon materials and books. Characters get skill points when they level up and you can turn those skill points into skill upgrades. And then finally, the missions go relatively quick. It takes a little bit to get used to the controls because of how you can move the entire party and sometimes there are traps on the road and stuff or there are buildings to click on. So it kind of takes a little bit to get used to, but once you do, you actually go through the missions pretty quickly. And as I get older, I find myself enjoying games more and more if they don't demand a ton of my time. Now I'll talk about the things I didn't like. These are mostly technical types of things or balancing. So it might seem a little nitpicky, but these are the issues that I encountered. My first complaint is that you can attack empty spaces. For range abilities that go, you know, a set distance, I understand why that might be the case, but if you have like a melee skill, you can accidentally swing into an empty hex and waste your action points and your stamina, which means you have to be very, very careful when you are in combat. My second complaint is that you can't see your chance to hit enemies or your chance to crit. You don't really know what's gonna happen when you hit enemies, and I don't know if that's just me not being able to find that information, or I didn't turn on a chat setting somewhere. I tried to look for it. The thing I really don't like in the combat, there's another one I'm gonna talk about right after this, but one of the main things I don't like in the combat is I don't have enough information when I'm fighting things. I don't know what my chance to hit is. I don't know what my damage is. I don't know what my crit is, so I can't really measure out my damage and stuff and plan around things happening. So you're just kind of swinging at whatever enemy you're trying to focus fire until it eventually dies. You can see their HP, which is nice, but you don't know if you're gonna do two damage, six damage. You don't know if you have like a 40% chance to crit or really anything. And I think in a tactical game, the player needs as much information as they can get. I know I'm talking about this third, but this is probably my biggest complaint is that there is no zone of control type of element in this game. And for those of you unaware, that's a opportunity attack type system where if you are in melee range with something and you move away, they get to hit you for free. The reason this is a really good system to have and a lot of RPGs that are turn-based and tactical have it is because if you make a mistake in positioning or if the enemy makes a mistake in positioning that you exploit, you get to punish them for making that mistake. This game does not have that. So if someone ever runs up on your archer, then you can just walk away and nothing happens to you for it. My next complaint is focused on gear. The gear and skill upgrades are pretty linear, but to be fair, games like Darkest Dungeon, they were linear in that as well. So there's never like you pick a skill and you get it to rank three or something like that, and then it just drastically changes. 
everything is really incremental. So if you upgrade weapons, you get a little bit of damage. Armor, you get some armor. If you upgrade your skills, that might get a little more crit or a secondary effect. But otherwise, they don't change too much. And since the upgrades are so minor, at least for skills, it doesn't really feel like you need to upgrade the skills that often, even though you get skill points to do it. And another is that every character, I believe every class gets the same abilities. I might be wrong on that, but I don't think I've seen a copy of a class yet that has different abilities in my time playing. And that's kind of unfortunate because another fun thing to do in tactical roguelike type of games is being able to swap your skills to make different teams or or use different strategies. There are a couple points I forgot to mention for the criticisms and one is the game seems to like graphically have issues with reframing itself when you take it out of 1080p which is the default mode. I usually play in 1600 by 900 because I have one monitor hooked up currently. I know that's a sin in 2022. Since I play my games that way so I can still see my recording software and chat if I'm streaming. When I put this game into 1600 by 900 something things were getting cropped off screen or I'd have to like put it back into 1080 so I could like scroll over and look at things. I was kind of annoyed by that but again that's something that is fixable. I know I had a lot of criticisms but I feel like most of them are pretty simple fixes. I'm not a game developer obviously but I feel like they could be fixed relatively painlessly from their end if they chose to do so. Maybe they just want the game to be this way in terms of like the combat mechanics and stuff that I talked about. And I did say a lot of good things. You know, I enjoyed the replayability. I enjoyed the kind of fundamental aspect of the game. I liked that it was animated and voiced and I thought the classes were really cool. There's a lot of different choices. It's definitely more of a high fantasy type of setting where it's not, you know, like low magic or something. You get warriors, you get wizards, you get rogues, you get rangers. So there's a lot of cool stuff out there. And I think this game really does have a good foundation to be a solid game. Even though it was just released recently, I do think it needed a little more time in the oven to catch some of these issues. But hey, maybe a video like this or some Steam reviews if you choose to leave some, maybe that will get it to where we think it needs to be or give them some good feedback. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you played Paths in Danger, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Or if you didn't play it, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Feel free to ask some questions too or join Discord. But that's it for this one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.